Okay, I was most amused by this cartoon clip that someone gave me of Dilbert a little while ago, where uh, Dilbert's colleague gets scammed into going to a seminar that teaches him how to make a million dollars, basically by investing a hundred dollars at five percent and waiting for 190 years. And I thought the maths in that is a good opportunity to demonstrate some of the other scales on the slide rule. This is a British Thornton P221 and it's got, I'm afraid I don't even know the names of the scales, but can you see on the left here LL1, LL2, LL3, and then up here O2, O1 and O3. And the labels on the side E to the X, E to the 0.1X, E to the 0.01X, and then E to the minus X at the top. I, I'm no mathematician, so I don't even know the technical terms, but it's for working out things like N to the X. Why? So, if we wanted to work out 4 squared, or even 4 cubed, we've got the ability to easily do that with the A and B scales, which are the square of everything that appears on C and D. Or for cubes, we've got the K scale, which is C and D cubed. You know that. If you want to do higher powers than 2 or 3, you need these scales here. I'll show you an example. If we take 4, we want to work out 4 cubed. We look at this scale here. You can see it runs from 1.01 all the way up and along and then back and starts again at 1.11, runs all the way along there, goes up and up and up to 2.7, up and up to about 20,000. That's where we set our n number. So we'll find our 4. You can see that here on LL3. So we'll move the cursor there to 4. That's our n. Now for our x, our power, we use the C and D scale. They're labelled x. So we move our starting position of 1 to line up with the cursor against 4. So far, so good. So to find our power of 3, we move that along to 3 on the x. Ooh. So that gives us 4 to the 3, 4 cubed. And if we read down from the cursor, we can see that's 50, 64. We know that. That's good. All seems to work. And we can go up and up and up. We can keep moving that scale. 4 to the 4. Read along there is 2, there's the 100, so this is 256. Move it up again. 4 to the 5. There's the 1000 mark, we're just over that. 1024 and so on move the power up to 6 we've got 4 to the 6 there's 1000, 2000, 3000 4096 all well and good we can also use it the other way so if we want to find out the nth root of something say for example the fourth root of 62, we can work backwards. That's our x, that's our power, that's our y, our finished product, isn't it? So we want to work backwards from there. Well, do it in the same way. So we find our product, which is 62, on LL3. There's 50, there's 60, 62 line our cursor up with that and we want to find what number is at the end of this when the power is 4 so we line up our power of 4 with 62 chase that back along here to look at the starting point on 1 find our starting point then is 2.8 
well it's a fraction over it, 2.81. So the fourth root of 62 is 2.81. Do that the other way as well if we want to know 1.12 to the x if that's equal to 500 what is x equal to? So we know our starting point this time is 1.12 we can find that on LL2 1.12 line up our 1 with that and we're looking along for our product which is 500, well we'll find that there's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 we'll find that there and then we can read up there 5, 4, 9 thereabouts now hang on our starting point was on LL2 to find 500 we've had to jump up to the next scale to the LL3 the effect of that is look timesing by 10 from 0.1 x to x which means that we have to times this answer by 10 to get our answer to get our actual x so it's not 549 it's 54.9 I hope that makes sense. So, going back to our little friend here, who's told the easiest way to million is to invest a hundred dollars at five percent interest and wait for 190 years. How could we check that? Well, he's starting off with a hundred dollars. Every year, he's adding five percent interest to that. Now, if you want to add five percent to something, you times it by 1.05. He's having to do that for X number of years until he gets a million. So he's doing that for X number of years until he gets a million. We can simplify that, we can get rid of some of these numbers and find out But that's the equation we're looking for. 1.05 to the x equals $10,000. So, find 1.05. You'll find that on LL1, right at the bottom. That's our start point. Line up the cursor with that. Line up the 1. That's our starting point on C. That's our starting x and read along until we find the product 10,000 now again our starting point there we've had to leap up not one but two scales going from 0.01x to x so any answer we want is going to be multiplied by 100 we've got 1.88 something times by a hundred hundred and eighty eight and a bit so in fact we wouldn't have to wait quite a hundred and ninety years it's hundred and eighty eight years and a few months so there we go so that's very briefly how to use the LL1 LL2 and LL3 scales Using these ones at the top is the same kind of procedure, but of course you're looking at minus, let's get that in focus, minus x's, minus x, minus 0.1x, minus 0.01x, and as a non-mathematician that just makes my brain bleed. I can do it, but it's very confusing. So there you go, hope that helped.